Bradley, this is Mildred Monday. I'm just driving through town in my new Ferrari. It had to be a Ferrari. I don't want a Porsche. My gay son was offering me a Porsche. I said, no, you don't. You're going to get a shotgun behind me. Anyway, where in the hell is the new PLA radio? First of all, I cannot stand listening to you and then the co-host babble on the phone show about absolutely nothing. I don't know who you think you are, but I am Mildred Mundy, and I want a brand new, fully fleshed out PLA episode with prank calls and schemes and all sorts of crazy stuff. Otherwise, I'm going to have the police on you. All right, Texas, Texas, motherfucker. everyone, welcome to another episode of PLA Radio. I'm your host, RBCP, or as the Paul.com people call me, Brad fucking Carter. I got to talk on the Paul.com show just a couple days ago, and we touched on several PLA topics. You can listen to their weekly security podcast at paul.com.com. This show is sponsored by Love Shark from the PLA forums, who was awesome enough to donate 10 bucks to the PLA just for the hell of it. So thanks, Love Shark. There's a new PLA video out on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash America, which shows you how to enter in a secret code on a payphone and make all of the money come pouring out of it, which of course is complete bullshit. It was made as an April Fool's Day prank and to trick YouTube users into wasting their time at payphones. And it's caused a somewhat steady stream of email of people asking me why it's not working for them. So to those of you who've tried it, April Fool's. As mentioned in the last episode of PLA Radio, I've started doing a new show on Party 93.4 called The Phone Show, usually with Linear as a co-host. This is a weekly show where we play music and pranks, take phone calls, and have even done a few interviews and live prank calls. You can listen to it each Monday night at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at Party93.4.com. I've also set up a podcast feed on it, so you can subscribe to it in iTunes at phonelosers.org slash phoneshow.xml, or listen to the archives and view the show notes at phonelosers.org slash phoneshow. There's a new PLA voice bridge number, which is 712-338-8730, extension PLA. You can go there each evening to chat with other people from the PLA forums, uh, hear live prank calls, loud music, yelling, and touch tones being pressed. This episode of PLA Radio is going to show you how incredibly easy it is to convince guests and hotels to do just about anything you ask them to, simply by calling their room and sounding official. For some reason, people staying in hotel rooms never seem to consider the possibility that the person calling their room might be lying to them, so they're open to just about anything you can suggest to them. To pull off this amazing social engineering feat, simply call up a hotel room, tell the guest you're the clerk at the front desk, and spout off whatever nonsense comes to mind, just as we do in these next few calls. Hello? Hey, hello, this is Michael from the front desk. Yep. We're going to have to ask you to shut the fuck up, sir. We've gotten complaints. What are you talking about? We've gotten noise complaints from other guests that you're making lots of noise in your room. We really need to ask you to please shut the fuck up. We, uh, we're sleeping. I, I don't think I believe that, sir, because we've gotten quite a few other complaints from other guests. Hello? Hello, this is uh, Mark from the front desk. I'm just giving you your wake-up call. I don't have a wake-up call. We show right here you have a wake-up call. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I never gave them one. No, somebody from that room made a call and gave a wake-up call. So I don't know what your problem is here, but we have a wake-up call. Well, you just woke me up. I didn't need one, so thank you. Well, that was the purpose, to wake you up. So Sir. If you're, what? Listen to me. I didn't ask for one. It was a mistake. Well, okay? why, why would you call the front desk and ask for... I didn't! There's no reason to get bitchy with me. Well, no, there's just... no reason for you to be insistent that I wake up. Hi, this is Jonathan. I'm calling from the front desk. Yes, yeah, can I help you? My, um... My shift just started. I'm sorry to wake you. I just got here. I'm required by law to notify all our customers when I start my shift that I'm a registered sex offender. 
my parole officer says I gotta do that. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake you, I just have to do that so my parole officer doesn't, uh, you know. Oh, man. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, that, that's, they don't, they should have it so you can call people during, um, you know, wake hour to go out of sleep. It's actually a pretty rare thing for hotel guests to think that you're not being honest with them, even when you start saying outrageous things. The calls that we do on phonelosers.org slash hotel are pretty tame compared to the other prank callers that have gotten hotel guests to do things that don't make any sense at all, such as this next call by Sandy Chapin. Ah, yes, hello, this is Sandy Chapin calling down at the front desk. Are you enjoying your stay so far? So far. That's good to hear. Is everything fine with the room? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, listen, have you noticed anything funny going on with the toilet in your room? This call is really long, so I'm not going to play the whole thing where Sandy convinces this man that he needs to help her with some plumbing issues. We'll just skip to the good part. We're going to need you to get one of the bath towels, ball it up, stick it in there, and flush the toilet. Okay. We have to get that thing blocked. Okay. All right, I'm going to flush it now. Okay, make sure I can hear that flush on the phone. Okay. I don't know if you can hear very much there. It's not very loud. No, not too much. It must be those quiet flushing toilets. Okay, let me go in the back. Guys, what do you think about that? Is that it stopping? No, it's still coming out. Okay, so did you flush that? Uh, yep. It almost came, it came up to the very top rim. I thought it was going to overflow there for a second. Okay, sir. So what should I do? All the other tails you have in there, I need you to flush those. Okay. They're not going down. They're just clogging it up. You want it to go down the hole? So I just need that thing clogged. Okay. Well, now there's water running all over the floor up here. It's coming onto the carpet. It's so deep. <laughs> on the bathroom floor. Okay, sir, you need to pick that up with towels. Okay. How much water is actually on your floor? A lot. <laughs> like how much, like what are we dealing with? Is it out on the carpeting? No, I, I blocked it with another te- with another hand towel so it didn't go onto the carpeting. But it's uh, the whole bathroom floor. <laughs> Is filled up with water? Yep. They're telling me, do you have an extra pillow in that room? Well, there's a bunch of pillows in here. There's eight pillows in here. Oh my God, sir. We're going to need you to take one of those eight and try to flush flush it down the toilet? (laughs) And do what, honey? Yes, sir, because the pillows are more billowy than the towels, and they have yeah. a better chance of cutting off the water flow. Well, it cut off the water flow because the water just came out onto the bathroom floor. Okay, sir. We're just going to need you to try this, and then that'll be the last thing. Take the towels out. Yes, sir. Take the towels out and just put the pillow in there. And flush. And flush it. Yes, Okay. Sir. There's going to be more water on the floor, I think, when this happens. Okay, we're going to send our mop crew up there, and we are definitely getting you a new room. I'm going to put you right through to Mabel when this is done. Okay. You you want me to do this? Yes, sir. Okay. Does that do anything for you? It's cutting it off very much, sir. What does it look like in your room right now? <laughs> well... You got a wet pillow and a bunch of wet towels up here. Oh my god. Sandy Chapin used to have a MySpace and some other links to buy her CDs, but I can't seem to find any trace of her on Google today. I will post a link to her last FM station in the show notes, though. We're going to take a quick break and listen to a very small portion of all the voicemails that have come in during the past six months that I haven't been making PLA radio episodes. And then we're going to listen to a few more hotel pranks. You have new messages. What up, Mike? I'm just calling to say motherfucking cactus on this motherfucking cactus line, yo. Been fucking listening to PLA for about four months now, and I love it, man. Take it easy. 
Okay, um, you have a whole bunch of songs throughout your podcast. I was wondering if there's, like, some place on the website to go to download those songs. Like, um, uh, that song, Spoofing Guilty Conscience and Linear. So, yeah, where can I find those? A lot of the PLA theme songs that you hear in the shows can be found on phonelosers.org slash songs. And then there's even more at notla.com slash music. Not everything is there yet, but most of it is. Brad, just to give you some input on on your radio show. Well, first of all, it's wonderful. Perfect. And uh, I'll, I'll give you the main reason why. I, I think one of the things you uh, you said when you first started was that you, you're, you're not going to let it usurp your your, uh, your podcast. You're not going to let it take over your podcast and not do the podcast anymore because of it. But I think... Uh, I think it's actually superior to the podcast because you have to do it every week. It's like you're trapped and you have to entertain us. Hi, this is Rob C. Firefly, and I just wanted to let you know that I deeply and totally love you and all you stand for. And, uh, wait, I think I called the wrong number. Yo, Brad, what's up? This is Night Stalker. I'm just calling to say that you're pretty much God, and I pretty much bow down to you and worship you every night before I go to bed. Turn on your goddamn television. This is blue. Packing since 99, boy. I don't even fucking know. I don't even know. Cactus! Cactus, cactus! Oh, yeah! Hello, Brad Carter. Would you like to buy an extended warranty on your red box? Do you know how much of a replacement crystal can cost? Cactus, cactus! Hey, Brad, uh, I remember reading somewhere on your site about uh, some radio guy that you were messing with, and uh, he, like, turned his phone off or something, and you did, like, a emergency uh, call or something using the operator, and somehow it went through. I was wondering, uh, what's that called again, and how do I do it? Uh, You're probably thinking of the Wacky Morning DJ episode of PLA Radio uh, a few episodes back. That technique is called emergency operator interrupting, and it's something you can do by just dialing zero and asking the operator to do. This is something I used to do from home all the time in my BBSing days to knock users off of bulletin board systems so that I could call in and get on when the line was busy. And you could actually do it from payphones uh, with a red box also, but I don't think that's possible anymore. I think it's a little more complicated these days and definitely more expensive than it used to be. But who knows, you should give it a try and let me know what happens. This is Serious Business Incorporated. I'm just calling to tell you the cactus is serious business. Very serious business. Nicholas Gilson, we go those. Cactus. Hey, Brad. I've got an interesting phone number for you. I have Kevin Mitnick's cell phone number. Not going to tell you how I got it or where. But anyway, if you're interested in pranking Kevin Mitnick, the phone master himself, his cell phone number is 805 805- I think it's probably best that I don't mess with Kevin Mitnick because I know what he could do to me. Speaking of Kevin, though, uh, he was in the news recently because uh, people have been calling his cell phone, I guess, relentlessly harassing him and uh, causing problems with his cell phone provider. And I guess he's having to leave his cell phone provider for whatever reason. It's kind of an interesting thing to read about, and I will try to find it and link to it in the show notes. You fucking dick. What the fuck, Red Box Chili Pepper? You fucking cunt, Carl motherfucker. No, I'm just fucking with you, man. Um, so Window Licker here, aka Lunar from the Binary Revolution forums. I just want to say, uh, keep on doing your show, man. Fucking laugh my ass off when I heard you do that, uh, MJ Moon, you know, getting his real phone number and shit. That's fucking hilarious, man. Fucking, I like his show and everything, but, you know. What you said is true. You know, he gets all these people phone numbers and he like calls them in the middle, you know, in the early morning and he just kind of harasses them. And you did the same thing and he thinks it's against the law. You know, that's kind of fucking bullshit right there. Did you ever know that you're my hero? Even though it sounds kind of gay, I can fly higher than an eagle. If I were Brad Carter from PLA. This is the last message. Thanks, everybody, for the voicemails. If you want to leave one of your own, you can call us at 505-796-4020 or phonelosers.org on Skype. You can also email us at radio at phonelosers.org. We are going to call your words. 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 We
You're gonna break your home You're gonna boast your dots And harass you You're gonna steal your car You're gonna go too far You're gonna drive you nuts You fucking bastard The following clip was taken from episode 42 of The Laszlo Show. So, I did not realize this, but uh, the house that the Brady Bunch was filmed at or whatever, you know, when the Brady Bunch would open up, there was that house, and I don't know how much of it was actually shot at, at the house or whatever, but that's that's a real house that still stands, and there's this old woman that has lived in it since then. <laughs> and uh, this guy tracked down her phone number, and she's this crazy old woman, and he calls and he fucks with her, asking... Alice. Where's Alice? Can you look? Hello, could I speak with Carol? You must have the wrong number. Is this the Brady residence? The who? The Brady residence. Yes. <laughs> this old man. Yes. Old, she's so tired. Dude, she's so tired of getting fucked with. Because every time people just show up at that fucking house, ring night. Hey, is Oliver here? Yeah. <laughs> I got a tiki doll, motherfucker. Yes. I need to speak with Carol Brady. She's not in. Oh. Well, could you tell her the George Glass called? <laughs> George Glass. <laughs> Do you remember George Glass? No, who was that? That wasn't that Jan's fictional boyfriend? Oh, that's right. I do Not remember Sam oh. the Butcher. Bringing Alice the meat. Yes. One of my favorite lyrics of that's all time. Good, yeah. Brady. She's not in. Oh. Well, could you tell her the George Glass called? Who? George Glass. George Glass. It, 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 came to. It, it's about her daughter, Jan. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> She's dead. Do you know when she'll be back in? No, I don't. You don't even have an, an idea? They're out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she playing a lot? Oh, I know, that, dude. You, she's a lonely, she's a, a very old, old woman. <laughs> the kind of woman who talks to salespeople, you know, I just know. to have something to say. It's like the other. I, an idea? They're out of town. Well, when will they be back, though? Well, they're on a trip. Did they go to the Grand Canyon again? <laughs> 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 or Hawaii? Right. <laughs> They beat Vincent Price in a cave. <laughs> Are they running around a theme park looking for a fucking Yogi Berra fucking poster? They're on a trip. <laughs> Did they go to the Grand Canyon again? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Did they bring Tiger or did they put him in the kennel? <laughs> oh man. Oh <laughs> man. That, that woman just leads a sad, sad life. Yeah. That's uh, from these pranksters called Phone Losers. Uh, their website's phonelosers.org. I met them at a hacker conference, actually, but I don't... Um, their website was down the other day. It, it might be back up. Um, it's like the same people that have that phone number, 8675309. You know, they want to blow their fucking head off each time the phone rings. Wouldn't you just get a new... Hey, is Jenny there? <laughs> is Jenny there? <laughs> it's like, it's like, no, dude, cool. Jenny's, Jenny ain't here. You might recognize Laszlo from his radio segments in the Grand Theft Auto games. He also has a podcast you can listen to by going to Laszlo.com. Hello. Hello, this is David. I'm calling from the front desk. Yes. Uh, we've been getting some noise complaints in regards to your room, ma'am. Yeah? We're going to have to ask you to quiet it down, or we're going to have to call the police. Excuse me, but we've been asleep for about two hours. Well, excuse you. I don't think you're being honest with me. I think that's a crock. I wouldn't be getting multiple, you know, customers come and complain about your room, room 136. I'm sorry, but we've been asleep. Ma'am, that's bullshit. Excuse me. I said, ma'am, that is bullshit. <laughs> you are lying. No, I am not. Yes, you are lying. That is, you, that's bullshit. You are full of bullshit, ma'am. Do you always talk to your customers this way? Only the ones that make a lot of noise. Do I need to come remove you from your hotel room? I am sorry, but you do what you do that you have to do. I am being totally honest with you. Well, I'm going to call the police. Hey. Yeah? What time is it? It's late enough that your wife shouldn't be keeping everyone up with her, her moaning and grunting and screaming. What are you talking about? We're so, what time is it? You're keeping all our other guests up, goddammit. You, you need to shut your stupid fucking wife up. Go smack her. 
Pranknet, who you'll remember from the KFC incident in PLA Radio episode 23, has been making the news a lot lately with their late night calls to hotels where they convince guests to break open their windows, pull fire alarms, and set off hotel sprinklers. One hotel has claimed that they've caused around $50,000 in damages just from making a phone call. Here's a short segment from one of their hotel pranks where they convince a woman to break out her window because of a gas leak in the hotel. Ma'am, once you get airflow into that room, you're going to be just fine, okay? I'm That's trying. the main concern. I'll right, keep but trying. I can't get this last blast to break. Ma'am, ma'am, sometimes, sometimes your voice helps, okay? It helps shatter the window, okay? The wave patterns, it breaks the window. Just yell break as you hit it. Just yell break. Break! Louder. Break! Louder. Break! 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 Oh, God. Hold on. Okay, I broke it. Okay, ma'am, listen. Ma'am, 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 we have, ma'am, we have rescue teams, we have rescue teams outside, they need to identify which direction... Help! Help! There is nobody out here! You need to, no, ma'am, ma'am, you need to yell Operation Dex for them to know exactly where you are, we have a GPS Dex tracking Operation, your room. Operation, Operation uh, Dex and Slayer! Operation Dex and Slayer, ma'am, go ahead. Dex, Dex and Slayer? Operation Dex and Dex Slayer, ma'am. D-E-X, Dex and Slayer. The uh, Dex and Slayer? Yes, ma'am. Help! Dex. Help! Operation Dex and Slayer! Help! Operation Dex and Slayer! Operation Dex and Slayer! Help! Why is there nobody else doing this? Ma'am, help is on the way. Remain calm. Shower the window. Help! <laughs> help! Help! While the prank net calls are fun to listen to, it's never a good idea to incite panic and involve emergency services in prank calls. Two of the members of prank net have already been arrested in the past few months for calls like this, so you should never try doing calls like this yourself. I'll be linking to a few news articles about prank net's recent activities in the show notes. I'm going to play two more hotel pranks before I wrap up this episode. This first one is to a hotel in the UK and features Mr. and Mrs. Spessa trying out their British accents. Hello? Yes, this is Matthew. I'm calling from the front desk here. Um, Hi. The, we, hello. Um, we seem to be having a problem here with your room. Uh, room 1117. Yeah. We have, um, you're pr- presently in a non-smoking room, so were you aware of that? Yes. Okay. Uh, we presently, in, in all the non-smoking rooms, we have sensors that can detect when someone's smoking in the room. And I see here on the board, room 1117, the sensor for cigarette smoke has just lit up. Well, I, I don't smoke. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to not smoke, sir. That, that's the whole point of this phone call. Pardon? I don't fucking smoke. You've just woken me up. Sir, th- this, this technology is not wrong. At room 1117, there is cigarette smoke in that room. Were you aware that when you signed in, sir, were you aware when you signed in, you signed a certificate not to smoke in that room, or, or there would be a £300 fee? I'd like to speak to the general manager, please. Sir, please answer the question, and then I'll get the general manager for you. Were you aware already? Did you have prior knowledge that you signed this document that says if there's room... How dare you? How dare you? I'm not smoking, and you've woken me up, and I'm not... Sir. Hello? Hi, this is Melanie. I'm the duty manager down here, and I was told that you needed to speak with me. Yeah, um, I just had a very rude phone call. Yes, well... One of your colleagues. And uh, I'd like to... If I'd take his name. That's Richard. Melanie. Sorry? That was Richard, Richard Cardo. Right. Richard Carter. Now, if someone would like to come to my room, they can see that there was no cigarette smoke in this room. Well, our sensors have indicated that there are... Please could someone come to this room, because I don't care what your sensors are saying. I don't smoke. I've stopped smoking two years ago. Well, good for you. I hope your lungs are feeling better. But anyway, there's no need for the attitude with me, mate, all right? What I'm saying to you is that I have technology here that's saying that, and that's all we need to do is verify with you that you're smoking or not. Well, he was very, very rude to me. I said I wasn't smoking. I said you woke me up. And he actually started saying, did you realize that you'd signed a document when you checked in? Well, what, what's so rude about that? That we're, in, we're, that we're he reminding the... Quite, he's given me quite a bit of attitude. Okay. So um, it wasn't rude and that I he told... I still have yet to receive an apology from anyone. Well... He woke you... me up. 
You, you, you have an attitude you yourself, sir. You this is the Hilton. Hilton. You understand that, right? We don't, we don't accept this kind of behaviour from our guests. This and uh, I beg your pardon. I can't believe I'm listening to this. Well, I was told to call you that you were having an issue and that you were very angry because we were upset that you were smoking in your room and you have signed a document. You're telling me that my colleague is... I have not smoked, had a cigarette in my room, yeah? All right. Well, you I'm... Me up. No, let, let me just go through this. Certainly. You've just woken me up, yeah? Someone's woken me up, accused me of, of having a cigarette and saying, do you realise you, 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 you could incur a £300 penalty fine and I will have to throw you out of the room? Uh-huh. I said I'm not smoking and he's still telling me this. Mm-hmm. And um, I've said, look, please, you're more than welcome to come to him. He said, oh, our, our detectors are not wrong. I said, I'm not smoking. And he's accusing me still of smoking. And I've yet to actually have someone say sorry. Well, is it all right if someone does come up to verify please that thing? come to a room. All right. I actually would like to have someone to apologize. All right. And uh, I think coming from my side of the thing, you've got to understand, you've just woken me up. All right. Now, so it might be a female coming to your room. Are you going to have a giant erection when she comes up there, since you were just woken up? You know, male physiology, you have a, a giant oh, erection. God, just I know, but I can't have a female in there looking at your, your giant erection when she comes in, so I, I would need to take at least 20 minutes to find a male to come up. So your name is again who? Melanie. I'm the, I'm the duty manager here. And it, it's totally not uncalled for to, to be concerned that I don't send a female to your room to see your, your penis poking out of your underwear. I can assure you, man, that I don't have a giant direction at the moment. <laughs> All right. I mean, you know, male physiology, when you wake up and you're saying you were just awoken, that, uh, you know, morning erections are quite common. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't, you know, send, send one of my... There's no reason to be embarrassed if you can't have an erection. It's not, you know, there, there are medicines for that. I'd not have this conversation with well, someone can come up to my room. Well, someone will be coming up to your room. It will be a female. I need you to be fully dressed. And if you do have an erection, kind of tuck it down so no, she doesn't see anything. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not have this conversation anymore. Yes, I do realize what I can do. Thank you very much. All right. Hello. Hi, this is Kevin from the front desk. Yes. Um, we're having some problems with your room. It looks like we're going to have to move you to a different room tonight. No, you're not. And, uh, I'm sorry. We don't usually do this this late at night. I'm really sorry about the call, but... Yeah, we... Why do you have to move me? I, I'm, I'm sleeping. There's nothing wrong with my room. Well, we've got a celebrity coming in, and uh, they specifically asked for your room number. They, oh, they always... come on now. It's the middle of the night now. Yeah, I'm really sorry. We can comp you for a night if if you'd like, and... You'll get a free free stay for the night, but we just need to move you up to the third floor. Oh, come on. Who's this celebrity? It's uh, Carrot Top. Oh, God. I'm really sorry, Em. Honey, I'm, a, I'm sleeping. It's in the middle of the night. Why would they ask for my room? They, this is just the room that he always gets when he comes to this hotel, and he comes here a lot to do shows. And uh, we can comp you for a night, though. We can give you a free stay. So it's kind of be worth oh, a free... Oh, my God. Right now... Yeah, I'm, I'm, we, we're, we seriously, we don't do this very often. I'm really sorry to call so late at night. Yeah, I would think so. It's the middle of the night. I'm sound asleep. Yeah, we can give you a free ticket to a show and everything. No, I don't care about a show. I mean, I know who it is. Yeah. Carrot Chop. Yeah. I know who it is. No, I don't need a ticket to a show, that's for sure. Okay, but well, we can give you a free night, though. And he's, he's actually down here right now. You can meet him if you'd like. No, I don't care. Okay. I won't I tell him that, though. Him. What? I won't tell him that, though. No, I mean, I really don't want to do this. My room is, you know... No, I'm, I'm really sorry about this. We... The, the, the celebrities have priority over, you know, regular people. Oh, like, bullshit with celebrities. I don't care. I don't care if it's Frank Sinatra, you know. Mm-hmm. They're no better than you or I, believe me. Believe me. And that's pretty much it for this episode. You can listen to more hotel pranks by going to phonelosers.org slash hotel, where you'll hear extended versions of the prank calls from this episode. Don't forget to join the PLA forums at phonelosers.com and visit the PLA website at phonelosers.org. Type Phone Losers of America into Facebook and join the PLA Facebook group, which was started by Matt Emmons. You can also find us on MySpace and YouTube if you look hard enough. And listen to the phone show every Monday night on Party934.com. I'm going to end this with a very short interview I did with Rob T. Firefly on the phone show about a month ago, which features his latest PLA song called Bell Odyssey. So I, I hear you wrote a new song. 
I did. Um, I didn't write it. I stole it from some dude, but uh, I recorded it. All right, so you did a rendition of a song that I wrote exactly 13 years ago to this day. Well, I didn't write it, but I published it 13 years ago to this day called Bell Odyssey from PLA Shoe 30-something. Yeah. And what made you decide to do a parody of like a really old song like that? I think I happened to reread the issue uh, maybe, a, maybe a week or two ago, and um, I realized that it hadn't been recorded yet, and most of your other stuff that you wrote back then has. So I figured, why not? I had no idea it was actually 13 years to the day, so that was kind of wacky and fun. But um, yeah, I had nothing better to do with my morning. Uh, so you did all of this just this morning then? Yeah, I kind of I kind of started laying it out uh, last night and um, then recorded it this morning. Cool. I'm extra impressed that you did it so quickly. <laughs> and and I'm I'm really impressed that you actually read old PLA issues because they're awful. <laughs> I mean, really, they are. <laughs> I, I'm I'm still uh, I'm still terribly amused by them. Yeah, I I am when I occasionally go back and read them, but some of it's really bad. I, I kind of read over that one this morning after you uh, did this thing and. And, and I was pretty appalled by all my misspellings and stuff. <laughs> but but there was a there was a nice article on how to use a shrink wrap machine to get stuff for free. And you know all you have to do is invest several hundred dollars in a shrink wrap machine. I think those are cheaper now though. Or now I, they are. But in 1996, I think you you needed like a second mortgage or something. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to play your song now. So this will be the world premiere if you don't count Facebook and the PLA forums. And, and well, your d- journal. D- does anyone count any of that? I don't think so. <laughs> I certainly don't. So here's the new song by Rob T. Firefly called Bell Odyssey. Bell control to lineman Bob. Bell control to lineman Bob. Check your tool belt now and put your bell hat on. Bell control to lineman Bob. Found my truck keys, engine on. Get your work orders and please don't take too long. Control to lineman Bob, you've really screwed up good. The technician wants to know the cable and pair. Now it's time to leave your bell truck if you dare. This is lineman Bob to bell control. I'm climbing up a pole And there's spray paint on this box that says PLA And these wires look oddly different today For here am I standing on a phone pole Far above the ground I just dropped my shoe, but there's not much I can do. We're sorry, the number you are trying to reach is from the chat or drop it. We're sorry, due to telephone company facility trouble, your car cannot be completed at this time. We'll try your call again later. You try your call again later. Fixed 100,000 lines I'm getting really bored And I think my conscience knows which way to go Who's this guy that's on my phone saying Yo, 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 yo Bell 